a very, very, very exciting day yesterday. Wednesday, a lot of speculation, a lot of thought, a lot of doubt. Because I don't know about yourself, if you're a college football fan, if you are an alumni or a fan of a Big Ten team, it's been a very tumultuous, up-and-down, emotional five-week run here. Starting with October, uh, excuse me, August 11th, Big Ten comes out and says, we're not playing football in the fall. And they were the first conference to do so. The Pac-12 quickly followed suit. We had the SEC, the ACC, and the Big 12 say, fine, you don't want to play, that's okay. We're going to push on and we're going to play. We saw the Big 12 and the ACC kick off this past weekend. The SEC will kick off next weekend. And the Big Ten sitting there like, uh-oh, we may have made a big, big, big mistake. This actually could work. And whatever spring, early winter, even late fall season that we want to have, if it's not for the playoff, if it doesn't have playoff aspirations, it's either not going to work or no one's going to be interested in. And the Big Ten quickly, 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 thank you, thankfully to medical advances, thankfully to testing advances, have got the clearance that they feel comfortable pursuing and going after trying to have a spring, uh, excuse me, a fall season. And now yesterday. The day we've all been waiting for. A day, honestly, I thought would never come. I've got my hopes up too many times. I probably got my hopes up at least three or four times. Big Ten football's coming back. Listen to rumors on Twitter. These guys claim to have sources. I'm like, you know what? I'm in it. This guy seems legit. This seems real. And then we come out to the fact that Big Ten says we're not going to have a football season. But that all changed yesterday. Finally official, the Big Ten Conference is going to have football. It returns on October 24th. Eight-game regular season. Conference championship game, and hopefully, fingers crossed, if anything goes to plan, they will try, try to participate in the college football playoff. A great, 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 great day to be alive, to be a college football fan, to be a fan of a Big Ten school. I mean, now, here's the question, right? So, like I said, the ACC and the Big 12 kicked off this past weekend. The SEC is kicking off in a week and a half, September 26th weekend. So, by the time the Big Ten kicks off on October 24th weekend, you're going to be almost a month into the SEC season. You'll be almost six weeks into the Big 12 and the ACC regular season. So what is, if the Big 10 wants to make the college football playoff, if the Big 10's goal in returning on October 24th, having a Big 10 title game on December 19th, coincidentally, the Big 10 title game December 19th, the college football playoff poll, the final poll comes out December 20th. Don't, you know, don't think that's just an accident. What, is, what are the qualifications? How many games realistically does a Big Ten have to, uh, team have to play, whether it's Ohio State, whether it's Penn State, whether it's Wisconsin? We'll throw Minnesota in there if you want, Michigan. How many games do they have to play? Because their regular season schedule right now is eight games. They'll play eight games starting October 24th and then play ninth game on conference championship weekend. Eight games in eight weeks. Now, if you count the last week, the conference championship, you're going to try to have nine games for the Big Ten in nine weeks leaving themselves with no margin of error, right? We've seen already Big, uh, Big 12 ACC games get postponed. It's almost inevitable that an SEC game or two will get postponed. But because they started earlier, because they give themselves a longer runway, they have the ability to reschedule games if they are canceled. Baylor had to cancel a game. TCU had to cancel games. No problem. They can schedule it later on. You can put it at the back end. You can put it at the middle of the schedule. Virginia, Virginia Tech had to cancel a few games. That's why you start early, because you give yourself a runway to where, okay, if we don't have enough players healthy, if there's just an outbreak or it's not safe enough to play, we can wait a month. We can wait five, six, seven weeks, push it down the road, and still get the game in. The Big Ten is, I mean, they're testing, it seems at least they're confident that no games or even practices will be able to be canceled, because they can test everyone every single day and get the results right there. But they're almost trying to thread the, you know, the needle here by trying to play nine games in nine weeks in the middle of a pandemic. So how many games does the Big Ten have to play for you to say, you know what, they deserve to be in the college football playoff? Because you're going to have the SEC and the Big 12, they're playing 10 games. The ACC is playing 11 games. So even if one or two are canceled, they're still playing more games than the Big Ten. So how many games does Ohio State need to play, Penn State, Wisconsin, Michigan, Minnesota? How many games do they have to play where you are looking at them as a legitimate postseason contender? Right? If Ohio State goes, let's say, 5-0, and you have, let's say, 9-1 Florida or 9-1 Georgia sitting there. Can you justify putting 5-0 Ohio State in the playoff over, let's say, 9-1, 8-1, 10-1 Georgia, 10-1 Florida, 10-1, I hate to say it, Texas, Notre Dame? 
it's going to be a really tough decision. This is not just, you know, one of those things where the Big Ten decides to play, they want to make the college football playoff, and the winner's automatically going to get in. There could, could be a significant gap in number of games played between one conference to another. So what's the wins? What's basically the qualifications for the Big Ten to make the playoff? To me, in my mind, if they can play seven games, if they can thread the needle, maybe only have two cancellations out of nine weeks, which to me, again, seeing so far how games have been going, how, how the schedules have been going, where you see the Big 12 and the ACC are already having some issue getting some games off, having to cancel some games. Seven and nine weeks to me sounds at least doable. And to me, if it's 7-0 and Ohio State, 7-0 and Penn State, 7-0 and Wisconsin, that's enough to me to justify them getting the playoff over, let's say, a 9-1 and Florida, 9-1 and Georgia, 9-1 and Notre Dame team. Because in, in reality here, because we gotta, we got to be realistic, it's almost inevitable. Almost inevitable. Game is going to be canceled. So two out of nine is still enough of a game. So we have seven games. It's still enough of a sample size, to me at least, to tell you how good a team is. Right? Obviously, 2020 has been a weird year. College football is always, always a weird, just a weird sport in general. Try to explain college football, how it works to someone who doesn't know anything about college football. Good luck. You really, it's, it's, it's tough to even start. It is confusing with the conferences, the amount of conference games played, who's in the FBS, who's in the F- FCS, why some teams are really good, why some teams are really bad. It's a mess. And it makes no sense. But you know what? The chaos is what we love. The chaos is what we come for. So let's create more chaos. 7-0 and Ohio State. 9-1 and Georgia. 9-1 and Florida. Let's bring it on. But to me, again, 7-0. and Put them in. That's enough of a sample size. Because guess what? Because we just talk about the chaos of college football, because we, we talk about how basically little sense from a theoretical standpoint college football actually makes no teams, I, for, I should say, for a while, teams never played the same amount of games. In the 70s, the 80s, and 90s, you yeah, have teams play. Some teams play 10, some teams play 11. Even now, even now, we've seen teams like Ohio State in 2016, Alabama in 2017, lose one game, not even win their own division, don't go to their conference title game, so that means they only played 12 games, and they got into the playoff over a team like Penn State, in 2016, who went to the conference championship and won, so they played 13 games. They also got in, in Alabama's case, the next year, they were the second SEC team in. But they played one last game. They played 12. Let's say Georgia played 13. Penn State the year before played 13. And there's still teams are getting in the playoff. So one or two games, to me, is not a reason to leave a team out. I mean, think about it. We are currently, if everything even went perfectly, Right in, in, a, in a non-pandemic year, let's go back one year to 2019. You still have conferences and teams that aren't even playing the same amount of conference games. You have the SEC playing eight conference games and four cupcakes. You have the Big, 12, uh, Big Ten excuse me, and the Pac-12 playing nine conference games. There's a legitimate argument that playing more conference games is a tougher schedule. So when you're talking about strength of schedule, we're talking about, oh, which wins are better, which losses are better. A two-loss team in the Big Ten versus a one-loss team in the SEC, but who is the SEC team beat? Who is their one loss? Let's some, look at some of these bad teams that they've played. I mean, we can't even agree on how many conference games all the big teams should play. So why all of a sudden now we're going to nitpick in a year that's been anything but normal, anything but usual, and say, oh, you know what? Ohio State only played seven games. Penn State, they only played seven games. Look at 9-1 Georgia. They're only lost to Alabama. They should get in. Look at 9-1 Florida. They've had some great wins on their schedule. Their only loss was to Georgia. Because they played two extra games. Let's put them in. I'm looking at how teams are actually playing. And I hope for the first time, because that is, to me personally, that's one thing that I feel like is lost on the committee. Now it's easier, because you actually have people now determining instead of a computer. But the eye test more than anything this year should really tell you who is good and who's not. There's really going to be no other barometer. We have no clue how truly good the SEC is or the Big Ten is or the ACC is because there's no other way to, to verify. No one is playing anyone outside of their conference. So we truly have no idea if a team, let's say, that's like 2-8 and eight, is really that bad or just their schedule is tough. Or a team maybe on top that's 7-1 and one or 8-0 no, had some impressive wins on paper, but maybe 
the depth of the conference is not as strong as it normally is. So in a weird year that this is, in 2020, where you have teams like the Big Ten hopefully, hopefully trying to play nine games if everything goes to plan. Tough, tough, but hopefully if everything goes to plan, nine games. You have the ACC playing 11 games. The Big 12 and the uh, SEC playing 10. The eye test, to me, is the one that's going to determine who's going to get in the cultural playoff. So sure, I'm putting in a 7-0 Ohio State team, a 7-0 Penn State team over the second SEC team or the second ACC team if they're 10-1 and or 9-1. and Because sure, an extra game or two is another data point. But let's also look, let's look at the rankings. Let's look at what we know from right now. I understand preseason rankings are always a crapshoot. Some teams are overhyped and they disappoint. Some teams we severely underrate and they're a lot better than we think. But looking at the Big Ten, you have Ohio State at number two. You have Penn State at number seven. Wisconsin's ranked. I, think, I believe it's five Big Ten teams that are ranked in the preseason top 25. The Big Ten is good. You're going to have some really quality wins if you're Ohio State and you beat Penn State. If you're Penn State and you beat Ohio State and you run the table and win the Big Ten, Wisconsin's going to have some impressive wins on their resume. The wins will be there. The strength of schedule will be there. So that's why, to me, there's no doubt whatever Big Ten team comes out and wins a championship, there's to me no doubt that they should get in the playoff. Seven games, if, if worst case scenario happens, right? The Big Ten can only play seven out of nine, which I think still would be a success, considering they're giving themselves no runway, there's no bye weeks. So there is zero chance to make up a game. If a team is sick, that game is either canceled, they have to forfeit, or that game is just flat out canceled, doesn't count on the schedule, and you hope, you hope, that you can play and have enough players to field a game the next week. So if you play seven out of nine games, to me that's still enough to determine a team's worth in their playoff. So it's a weird year. It's only going to get weirder. More chaos, as always, in college football. But I'm curious your thoughts. Now that the Big Ten is back, officially back playing, what would it take for them to make the playoff? Is it more about the eye test? Is it more about the wins, number of games? I'm curious your thoughts. What would it take? Because I've seen reading, I just kind of assume, to be honest, and then you know what happens when you assume, but you, you read and you assume, okay, the Big Ten's playing. They're going to get all their games and they're going to get their season before the college football playoff is revealed. They're going to be in. But I'm reading it. It's, it's not so fast. I mean, it seems like it's going to happen, but it was, a, it was not a definite. It was not a guarantee that, yeah, whoever wins the Big Ten is going to be in. So that has me thinking, at least. All right, what's it going to take? What are the qualifications that the Big Ten has to have in order to make it? To me, it's about the eye test. Seven games is more than enough in a year that's been crazy and a year that's been anything but normal for them to get in the playoffs.